So it's my pleasure to in introduce Dan Tangerlini. Uh, Dan began his career at the Office of Management and Budget and the U.S. Department of Transportation, and in 1998, he started working for the Washington, D.C. government. His career in the district included service in positions ranging from the CFO to deputy mayor and city administrator. In 2009, he returned to the federal government at the U.S. Department of Treasury. His innovative leadership in financial, budgetary, and management activities at Treasury uh, led to the Obama administration appointing him as the acting administrator of GSA in April 2012. Since then, Dan has launched a comprehensive top-to-bottom review of the agency to examine how GSA can address the challenges that exist within the agency and how we can best fulfill the mission in the future. He continues to lead the effort to ensure that GSA is a model of transparency, accountability, and good government. Please join me in welcoming Dan Tangerlini. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Uh, Jim, thank you very much also for your uh, your your uh, co-emceeing this morning. Um, I think it's appropriate, actually, considering how great a job they did, that we give the Just Three Singers another round of applause. Uh, my attempts to make them the Just Four Singers by joining in were rebuffed, um, probably to the benefit of everyone here in the room. Uh, and uh, it was good to see uh, Joe Jordan here this morning. He asked me if I was going to be revealing what's in my March Madness bracket. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but maybe Joe will. You should ask him during the questions. But um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to be here this morning to help start ACT IAX Acquisition Excellence 2013 uh, a meeting and training session. Um, and before I go any further, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Ken Allen and ACT IAC for working with GSA to organize this very important training conference. I, I thank the Acquisition Excellence 2013 Planning Committee, who we already thanked a little earlier, uh, both industry and federal employees. And that's the important uh, value add of the ACT I Act group, is bringing industry and federal employees together to look at our common problems and come up with solutions. We appreciate those uh, on, the, on the committee who focused on our key areas in planning this conference innovation and acquisition, and transforming the workforce. Finally, I want to thank the administrator for uh, federal procurement policy, uh, Joe Jordan, for working with GSA on supporting acquisition excellence and for being such a good partner and friend. We all know just how tight budgets are across the government right now. And faced with one of the greatest and longest standing gaps between spending and revenue in generations, agencies are being forced to make unprecedented cuts and search for every available savings. And sequestration has only intensified the problem. While the challenges of sequestration may or may not be temporary, the fundamental problem that we face, the need to reconcile revenue and spending, is the environment we'll be operating in for the foreseeable future. As a result, the work of the General Services Administration, frankly, has never been more important than it is today. The mission of GSA is to deliver the best value in real estate, acquisition, and technology services to the government and the American people. Our job is to support agencies and enable them to focus on their own important missions, like securing borders or keeping our food safe or protecting air quality, missions that are critical to the well-being of this country and its people. However, it is impossible for us to deliver the kind of savings that our partner agencies need unless we're running our own agency as efficiently and effectively as possible. When I first joined GSA last April, I ordered a top-to-bottom review that would both examine every aspect of how GSA operates and identify reforms designed to help the agency better accomplish this mission. This review gathered comprehensive feedback from employees at every level of GSA, as well as from the businesses and federal agencies with whom we work. The top-to-bottom review revealed a widespread duplication of support services throughout the agency. In response, we're consolidating some of, several of those administrative functions to strengthen and streamline GSA. Aligning and streamlining central services such as HR, IT, and finance will increase transparency and accountability throughout the agency. Consolidation will also help improve the quality of the services for our own employees. 
If we can provide the most effective and efficient services possible in our own operation, this will enable us to provide our partners with the consistent, common sense solutions that they need. We're committed to implementing these changes and ensuring that we get them right. We know that this requires skilled and experienced leaders. That is why over the last year, GSA has made some important additions to our leadership team. Shortly after I joined GSA, we brought on Ann Rung, who will be moderating a panel later today as our Chief Acquisition Officer. Later in the year, we hired Dorothy Robine as our Commissioner for the Public Building Service. Within the last six weeks, we've continued to move forward by adding a new Commissioner for the Federal Acquisition Service and a new Chief Financial Officer. Our new FAST Commissioner, Tom Sharp, brings almost 30 years of experience to GSA as an acquisition leader in both the private and public sectors. Before joining GSA, he was responsible for the Department of Treasury's procurement policy, as well as the oversight and continuous improvement of Bureau procurement operations. Prior to working at Treasury, Tom had valuable experience at IBM that included playing a key role in strategically sourcing their technical service requirements, generating significant competitive advantage for the company. His work as both a vendor and a customer will give us a unique understanding of the needs of everyone involved in the procurement process. Our new CFO, Mike Casella, just began working for us a few weeks ago. He's managed large and complex budgets throughout his career, making him an ideal choice to supervise GSA's finances. Before joining us, Mike worked with the U.S. Agency for International Development and also held positions with some of GSA's most important customer agencies. Through renewing our leadership and realigning our central services, GSA is going through a process that will make us a much stronger business partner that is able to meet the many needs of those who work with us. Done right, GSA offers our partner agencies a powerful opportunity, the total buying power of the United States government. When you combine agency purchasing power, it gives GSA significant leverage to drive down prices and generate savings that benefit both the government and the American people. We've proven this on the public building side, where we're able to use the scale of the federal government to negotiate leases that, on average, are more than 11% below market rates. This has created annual savings of $30 million across our lease portfolio and realized cost avoidance. By doing it once and doing it well for the entire government, GSA can generate these kinds of savings for our agency partners. And at a time when our budgets are tighter than ever, the common buying platforms offered by GSA represent a significant resource for procurement officials. Right now, GSA has approximately 10% of the federal government's market share. That's a number that we want to increase. And we want to increase it significantly because as a government, we do our work best when we do it together. By aggregating our purchasing power, GSA can not only find new solutions for our partner agencies, but reduce the costs across the federal government. And it's important to remember that there are other costs to using open market solutions than price. It takes roughly half as much time to use GSA's contracting solutions as it does to set up an open market contracting option. Each agency replicating acquisitions is an approach that also leads to unnecessary and wasteful duplication. For example, as best we can tell, the federal government has at least 4,000 wireless agreements and 800 different wireless plans with vastly different pricing. This leads us to the unfortunate conclusion that the average family does a better job of buying its cell service than the federal government. Our consolidation, our new leadership, and programs such as strategic sourcing are ways we're working to accomplish our mission of delivering the best value in real estate, acquisition, and technology services. We want, to work, we want you to work with us to help us provide the services that you need, but we also want you to challenge us to make our offerings even better. Your cooperation, your ideas are essential to finding the kind of solutions that the federal government needs right now. We're committed to continuous evaluation of our processes to find better and more efficient ways to collaborate with you. Our work is far from done, but I'm confident that with your support, we'll continue to find common sense solutions for the entire federal government. I look forward to working with all of you in the weeks and the months ahead. But right now, I'm looking forward to our discussion and any questions you might have. Uh, I'd also ask that you save the hard ones for Joe. I don't know. I, Joe asked me to warm you up, so I mean, you know, I. 
This has got to be a question. There we go. Hi, um, my name is Joelle Fauche from Washington Headquarters Services. And my question is, um, through the consolidation and the savings that you are trying to achieve, um, do you think that there's any way that you can pass on the discount to perhaps some of the vendors because I understand that they pay approximately a 4% fee to participate uh, through GSA? Thank you. No, I think that's a really great point you're making. So there's a, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of work we need to do to get people to understand what the GSA fee structure is. And it varies uh, for assisted acquisition services in which we're actually helping people put together the specific acquisition vehicle. It can be anywhere from four to six percent. But on an average GSA schedule event, it's less than one percent. And that one percent is actually rebated directly from the manufacturer to GSA to support the efforts to build, um, uh, to build those vehicles. Now we're committed to driving down those fees as low as possible. But equally importantly, we're committed to driving down the prices as low as possible and increasing the value of those acquisitions as high as possible. And so that's the, the real issue is how do we find a way that you can look at the, uh, the price as well as the entire cost of doing acquisition? And that's something we have to work more closely with, with both our agency partners so that they understand that using the GSA vehicle actually saves them time, drives down the cost of acquisition, improves quality and auditability, but also working with the vendors so that they don't have to do repeat sales calls, they don't have to develop uh, 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 more and more vehicles. Look, there's a maintenance cost to the vendors as well in having those, that many different relationships with the government. And so that's the trick. Joe's efforts and the efforts of the Strategic Sourcing Leadership co um, Committee are incredibly powerful tools of finding ways that we can aggregate, uh, aggregate spending so that we can improve um, uh, uh, both our ability to drive prices within the market, but also the ability of the vendors to serve us uh, in a coordinated, consolidated, and consistent way. But also then leveraging the existing vehicles that are out there, finding ways to teach more people about you know, what it is uh, they're getting when they get a GSA vehicle, uh, where, the, where the revenue goes. It frankly goes to us doing a better job of perfecting those vehicles and improving uh, things like um, uh, uh, the Federal Acquisition Institute, this all supports a better, stronger, and more robust acquisition activity. I appreciate the question. Yes, sir. Good morning, uh, Peter Tuttle. I'm uh, employed by a small business. Uh, thank you for uh, being available to uh, address the group this morning. Question has to do with GSA's uh, competitiveness within the federal market. And uh, we all know that consolidation is, is, is coming, uh, cost avoidance is here, budget problems. My question has to do with how you compete with the sh federal shared services centers that have been established in other agencies. And if you look at it, there does appear to be a duplicity of available services uh, provided by those centers and GSA what are you doing to be more competitive uh, against those shared service centers? Uh, it's a fantastic question. And I think in general, our, our efforts to be more competitive are designed around us uh, you know, uh, consolidating our own activities, being far more efficient and effective in delivering those services. But I, I would challenge one notion that in some way we compete with those shared services centers. I actually think we support those shared services centers. Look, if there is an acquisition, a series of uh, acquisition activities from around the, gov uh, con uh, the government that are aggregated in one of those shared services centers, uh, we can then provide them the acquisition vehicles so that we can re reap another layer of savings by reducing the amount of activity that those acquisition acti uh, uh, centers have to do to deliver the outcomes. That they're, um, that they're trying to generate for agencies. So I actually think shared services centers, uh, the GSA vehicles, they actually go hand in hand. Um, I actually think it's all part of a bigger effort to recognize that we don't need to keep doing things over and over and over again. And frankly, if we do it once and do it well and aggregate that spending power, we can improve the value of our acquisition activities and drive down both the price and the cost. So I, I actually look forward to us being a stronger, a better, 
a more transparent partner. Um, I think the shared service centers are something that we want to work with to support, but we want them to recognize that we're part of, frankly, the offerings that they have uh, to provide the agency. Hi, Eric Cho from the House Oversight Committee. Hi, Eric. So my question has to do with the GSA's overhead rates. Some have pointed out that GSA's overhead rates as compared to the industry partners it deals with is not as comparable. Is it true and what are you, are you looking into this? Well, I, I'd be curious to see the data behind the assertion that it's not comparable with uh, industry partners because I think at three quarters of 1%, that's a pretty thin margin for any operation. That's more like grocery store margins than it is, uh, uh, say, a technology firm. Uh, on, on the real estate side, you know, you're looking at about 5 or 6%, and that's what we, we're constantly benchmarking against other real estate management firms. The interesting thing is I actually think in many cases we are far more efficient. Just recently it be I became aware of the fact that, look, our vacancy rate in uh, GSA-managed federal real estate is about 3%. The private sector rate is 17.4%. If we were running at those vacancy rates, it would cost a billion dollars more a year to manage federal property. Now, that's not to say that we're comfortable that you know, we're good and we'll stop there. In fact, that's in fact why we're focusing on asking ourselves, are there ways that we can continue to drive down our own internal administrative costs? Are there lessons we can learn from GSA that then we can transfer to our agency partners and say, look, we experimented with this over here. This is what we got. These are the, these are the things, these are the obstacles we hit, but these are the benefits we reaped. Is there some additional learning from our activities we can share with agencies so they too can be more efficient? And I know that the, the House uh, will definitely uh, uh, give us strong oversight and make sure that we're actually delivering on those outcomes. Had a great hearing earlier this week and a lot of questions around those, uh, those, uh, those issues. So I know there's focus and attention, and that's going to help, too. We have one more, and then, and then I, I feel the energy already building in the room for Joe Jordan. So. If someone could bring around some more coffee for the people. That, no, I'm kidding. Good morning, Dan. Mike Grasso, Lockheed Martin. Hi, Mike. Can you can you give a little bit more detail? You talked about consolidation of IT, financial, and HR services. Can you give a little bit more detail on your thoughts with that? No, I think it's a great question. Coming out of the, uh, the events that, say, I'll say, led me to, uh, to this uh, incredible opportunity here at GSA, uh, the big questions were how, how can we make sure nothing like that ever happened again? And as we were conducting the top to bottom review and we were talking to uh, people within the agency itself, now we spent a lot of time a lot of time talking to every level of the agency, from the leaders of the different operations uh, through our top to bottom review, to line employees through something called the Great Ideas Hunt. It was a social media driven uh, 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 activity that we, we engaged in throughout the organization. We said anyone, anywhere in the organization can give us any idea about how the organization can be better. Uh, we got over 600 ideas, over 20,000 comments on those ideas. It was fantastic to see uh, people fighting and wrestling over the ideas. Some of them were great. Uh, we implemented uh, a, a number of the top ideas. I think it was about 10 ideas. Saved us $5 million uh, right off the bat. Some of them, uh, well, they needed some additional thinking. Uh, uh, there was one very unpopular idea. Uh, everyone should bring their own office supplies to work. Um, <laughs> And uh, what I admired uh, was the fact that someone felt gutsy enough uh, to put that out there, uh, and then that people engaged in a great conversation ar ar around those kind of, uh, 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 you know, around that kind of idea. And it was all done with, you know, no anonymity. We said, if you're going to participate in this, you have to put your name on it. And we had people from FAST commenting on improvements we could make in PBS, people in PBS commenting on FAST, and all across the organization. Um, I think that that's part of, uh, uh, part of the energy we put into asking ourselves, how could we be better? And what I heard over and over from people, both within the organization and to private sector partners we went and talked to, we talked to some of them, some very big concerns. We used the uh, President's Management Advisory Board, this group of CEOs from the private sector and institutions who advise um, the Director of OMB and the President on, on matters of management. 
We use those connections. We use connections with some of our big vendor partners. And we ask them, how do you operate more efficiently? How do you provide transparency down to the field level of expenditures? How do you create accountability within your organization? So something like what happened can't happen. And one of the things we learned is if you're going to give someone the title of chief financial officer, they damn well better be the chief financial officer, right? They better have uh, oversight, uh, responsibility, and accountability for all the finances of the organization. We had multiple chief financial officers. It's the same with our CIO. Instead of building a common corporate GSA uh, IT infrastructure, we were building multiple infrastructures. In fact, even within our business lines, we were building multiple infrastructures within the infrastructure. My favorite example, the least favorite uh, the, of, the, of uh, the PBS folks uh, of my you know, using it, uh, is the fact that we have 11 different building management systems. Each one of our regions has a different building management system. In six instances, or six cases, it's a different instance of the same system. And so each different region does it its own slightly different way. Well, um, that's not the kind of innovation we're looking for. Right? We're looking for innovation that's directed towards a specific outcome or goal, driving down costs, improving efficiency, getting better results. It's not figuring out if you can do a building management system slightly different or better than the next region over. In fact, in those instances, consistency help us and drives down costs and gives us more transparency and visibility. By giving Casey Coleman the actual title, responsibility, and accountability to be the chief information officer of the GSA, we believe we will be far more efficient, far more effective, be able to uh, have visibility into uh, the way we're spending our money, and design an architecture for our information technology that actually provides us meaningful, consistent information of the type the House is always asking me for. And so that's the, uh, that's the idea behind the consolidation activity, and it's an idea that really came through discussions with our own employees, with our own asso associates, and with our customers about what makes it frustrating to work with GSA. We want to know what we can do to be better. We want to know if our, um, if our uh, acquisition vehicles aren't meeting the needs of the agencies, what can we do to make them meet the needs rather than having them go out and do their own vehicle? Because what we're trying to do is uh, come up with a set of vehicles, a set of systems that all of the federal government can use. So we can leverage our own, you know, our, our scale, but we can also leverage our knowledge base. Uh, because we have, you know, incredibly dedicated, uh, uh, very, very focused and very committed uh, employees, both within GSA and across the government. If we can get together, if we can recognize that we work best when we work together, I think we can get fantastic results. So thank you very much. I hope you have a great conference. Uh, it's great to be here. And I think now we're, you're just about ready for Joe Jordan. Thank you, thank you Dan. Thank you.